So when my sister and her husband bought the bought the hobby farm, there was already a cat living there, like a female cat. And so one year she had kittens and my sister, I went to see them a couple of times and we went to see them one time when they were very young and just born and my mom said, oh, look at the cat with the brown nose. And he was very cute and I wasn't thinking that I was going to get a cat at that time, but of course I loved cats. And, and then it was about five or six weeks later that I woke up on Sunday morning and I thought, today is the day that I get a cat. I just I knew in my heart that that was the day and I knew exactly which one I wanted. I wanted the one with the brown nose. And so we drove to, we drove to her farm and I went into the barn and I said, can I have the cat with the brown nose? And she said, yes, I would love that. And so we picked him up and we named him Sebastian. I knew that his name was Sebastian. And I hope I can do his stripes well enough. And uh, he came home with me and he was the best cat in the whole world. And he was so good and so smart and I took him camping and people would say, oh, there's your cat. And I said, yes, he's our camping kitty. And he would, like I could let him loose and he would just kind of run around the campsite and then when it was time to go, he would just come back and he loved me so much. And we had so many adventures together. Like one time we were driving the mountains in BC and and uh, we stopped to look at the view. And then we drove about 15 minutes down the road to the campsite and I realized that Sebastian was no longer in the car. And I was racking my brain, oh my gosh, where could he have jumped out? And so we raced down the highway and I was just praying to be able to find the place that we had stopped to look at the view. And then we saw that there was this place to stop and look at the view and there was Sebastian on the side of the road and he was pacing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because I think he knew by that point he was like, oh my gosh, they've driven away without me and I was so happy and it, it took us about half an hour from when he was there to when we came back for him and and uh, I was just so grateful that nobody else picked him up you know trying to save him or do a good deed for him because I would have been really hard to find him when we were trying to have a nice time on this camping trip so luckily there he was waiting for me and we pulled up and he just immediately jumped in the car. He was so happy to see us again. And I was just absolutely thrilled to find him again because gosh, he was like my best friend. And so I'm not sure if I really do him justice with this painting, but we're only trialing this painting now because I've realized that this paper isn't going to work so well. But anyway, Sebastian looks a little like this. So he has a beautiful, beautiful coat. So the next picture is of Lily Love. And she is my doggie. She is my golden retriever. And she's quite similar to the color of the rabbits, the color of the cat. They're all kind of the same beige. And also, Lily is a lot bigger than Sebastian so the sizing is a little bit off but this is just an experiment anyway this particular painting because we're trying it with you doing the videos and we're trying it for myself with this particular image because I really like all these animals going together I call this one the diurnal animals so I think once I finish this, I'm going to get some other paper and draw it again and do it on some specifically watercolor paper instead of a multi-purpose paper like this is. 
so it's more just for fun and experiment right now but that's the color of lily basically so lily is quickly finished here and then we have the bird so we have many birds out in my backyard and especially in the winter time because I put seeds out and so the birds come and I get to see them all and it's just wonderful and today I saw a beautiful little sparrow so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the sparrow and I know that the eye is gonna get covered up but I was noticing the sparrows today and the sparrows fly south in the winter and they return when it's more it's warmer up here and so I saw a sparrow today and so that means that it's warmer up here now so their coat is kind of a gray their feathers are kind of gray like this color so pretty look at that I really like how this color um, blended together this is pretty much exactly the color that they are so lucky so good for us for getting this right color and I just I pushed it into the black a little bit and it came a little black that's okay and then usually the the under feathers are lighter right usually with any sort of animal their undercarriage colors are lighter I don't know why that is <clears throat> but it's very fine those lines are very fine under the under the bird, so I don't want to blend them into the color that we've chosen. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that very well, but it is painted. There. Okay, and then the beak. I think the beak is like a brown. It's like a brownie orange, you know, bird. So all of our animals are painted. So we have to do the ground, which I'm not sure why we didn't do that earlier on. But here we go. So let's give them some nice lush grass. We have lush grass right now. It's actually starting to grow and it's gonna need to be cut soon. Even though it's only the middle of February. And I guess it doesn't need to be perfectly straight, even though I've drawn this line perfectly straight. <clears throat> now I've drawn over it. So there, it's basically done. So this was a good experiment in using this paper and using the watercolor and using the glittery paint. You can see the sky is glittery, so that worked out well. And also I have to make sure that there's no little cuts in the paper because that's going to stay and even like the clouds you can see that the white didn't didn't carry in it's just sitting on top of the paper so we're going to finish this one now I like how Sebastian turned out it's not bad it's not bad it looks different but yeah so we're going to change the size of the dog make the dog bigger make the cat smaller the rabbits could be a little bit smaller the, the mouse is good, the teddy bear is good. The paper needs to be changed to a proper watercolor paper. And I also need to create an, a border around the edge, like a, about one inch or one centimeter, so that when I take a picture of it, it will fit wherever I'm going instead of me chopping off any sort of imagery on the sides. And especially if we decide to put this in a book, then, we definitely want to have edges around the the outside just to make sure that we can get it inside the margins when we put the book together. So that's it for today. So we're going to wrap it up now. This is effectively finished. So we're finished with this one and then next time we'll start um, this picture or a different picture on the watercolor paper. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for subscribing and commenting. We appreciate it so much and like the video as well. Thank you.